Okay, I'm back. All right, I feel a little bit better today. I've been having really horrible allergies and it affects my eyes, my nose, my throat, everything, my mood. It's just the worst. And I have revealed a lot on here. And why not this? Why not talk about allergies? Why not talk about exes? Are you allergic to your ex? Could be, could be very allergic. You know, some people bring out the worst in you and some people bring out the best. And there's some exes that are exes for a reason. And it's not because they're bad people and it's not because you're a bad person. It's because together you do not mix well. And then there's some people that you connect with so well and they may bring out the worst in you, but you guys are so awesome together being naughty. You know, it's that, <laughs> that toxic relationship that you, you know is toxic, but you're having so much fun that you're like, oh, fuck it, <laughs> you know? And then there's those relationships that you think, you, you think it's the one that got away, you know, you're, you pine after them and <sighs> you remember the good times and you put up, on, you put them up on a pedestal because you're like, oh, this person was amazing. This relationship was perfect. But then you forget all of the bad things. And that's kind of where I'm at right now, where I'm thinking of someone and he was someone that I love very much. And if I was going to settle down and have kids, he was the one I was going to do that with. And I almost did. And we were together for almost 11 years off and on. And when we met from the day one, it was amazing. And we weren't really supposed to meet. I was writing a little book. Like, I don't know why I call it a little book. I was writing a book and I needed um, a landscape architecture to talk to. Don't ask me why. It, this was like during the time period where you did, you know, of course, the internet was around and this and that, but you couldn't find all the information you need yet. You know, you would have to go to a library. You would have to talk to someone who, who does it. But my character in the book was a landscape architecture and... Uh, my friend, who was my best friend since we were kids. Let me talk about that too. Ex-friends. Um, she's someone also that I've adored my whole life. Ever since we first met, um, she claims that I walked up, that she walked up to me and said, Hi! And I handed her a little people. You know those little peoples? <laughs> You know, they have planes and they have cabins and, you know, they're like these little peoples and they're plastic and they're round and I don't know. But I had a whole bunch of those. I have a picture of me with those peoples. It's very funny. And um, I guess I handed her one. I just was not good at communication back then at all. <laughs> and that, that made me laugh. Um, and I could see that happening. She was really outgoing. She's, she's extremely smart. She was the kid in school that always had her hand up, always. She knew all the answers, and she probably still does. So having her in my life as my friend for so long only enhanced it in so many ways. And I was so grateful for her friendship, and I miss her friendship now. But this is kind of what happened. Okay, we were screenwriters together as well. We started screenwriting, and her cousin had done a movie and I'm not going to name it because then you'll figure out who this is and I'm not having it. <laughs> her cousin was a producer and had her own company and we wrote this really good script. It was indie. I, okay. The deal was, this was, this was the deal with our screenwriting. I wrote most of the scenes, the majority, and she would add to it and edit. And then she would add her, you know, a few scenes here and there. I think she wrote like one scene in that particular script and that's okay. But at first I, you know, I didn't mind it. I didn't mind that. And plus it was her cousin that we were trying to sell it to. And so 
I was like, put your name on it first, have your name on it first, you know? And she was, she would read it. Like every time I wrote a scene, I was so excited to, to contact her the next day. We would talk every single day for hours and I would say, oh my God, I have a new scene. You have to, you have to, you know, listen to it. It's awesome. And we would talk and she was so encouraging, just a really good friend. And then this happened and a lot of things happened, but this is the main thing. Her cousin was studying landscape architecture. Coincidence. I didn't even know she had a cousin in LA. I had no idea. She did kind of mention a few times that she would go hang out with her cousin and he, she thought he was cute. And I'm like, oh, cool. That's awesome. You know, I go, my cousins are all back East or in Florida or wherever. I don't know, but England, you know, wherever they were, I have cousins in England. <sighs> um, my uncle married an English woman. And so, yeah, when I'm thinking of moving, I'm always like, I should go to England. But then I have to remind myself that, um, England has its own issues. <laughs> They have a Trump-like figure, Boris Johnson, and so he's, whatever. Okay, so that's not the story. The story is that um, I met her cousin on the phone. And she's like, you know, she talked about him, like I said. She had talked about how cute he was and how he had suffered with anxiety as well in the past. And that he was very sensitive to the fact that she does. Oh, that's another thing. This is the person. This is the... Um, the person that I talked about in other stories, you know, in other episodes, I don't even know what to call this. <laughs> I don't know if to, I called a show. I don't know. But she's the person that I talked about that had suffered with panic attacks and anxiety and agoraphobia since like age 15 or younger. And um, she didn't leave her house for a long time. And I remember being so young and not understanding. And I took it personal. Because my mom had abandoned me and all of that. My dad was taking care of my sister and her kids and all of that. And I remember just feeling completely rejected. And I thought she just didn't want to see me and this was her excuse. That's what I thought. And so, but yeah, she suffered greatly and I don't know how she got through school. I don't know how she got through college. She's amazing. She's the strong feisty person and I always felt really blessed just to know her because of all all of this so when I started getting panic attacks she was the person I called of course I was like I don't know what's going on and so she really did help me through a lot of it um, most of it really I was like I said I was very grateful to have her so um, she introduced me to her cousin and it was love at first, first voice, love at first high, you know, um, we talked about, we ended up not talking about landscape architecture, which was the whole reason why I called him to begin with. And he read me poetry and he told me about school and, and at the, he was, what I didn't know when I first started talking to him was that he was like a trust fund baby kind of. You know, he had an allowance every month that his parents would give him. When I first started talking to him, he lived at home and he was helping to take care of his nephew who had, I think it was Asperger's. He had some kind of disorder and he was a sweet, sweet kid. His sister's um, son, obviously, his nephew. And he was really good with him. And so that's another thing that made me fall for him. On top of that, he was working in a nursery he was living in a very expensive area in a very expensive home and he was getting a certain amount of money every month, but he was really down to earth. You know, he was working in a nursery with plants. We love talking about plants and we both were fans, obviously of indoor plants, outdoor plants, whatever. And his mom had a, you know, her, her area where she had tons of plants and so we talked about that. We talked about everything. I just was so in love with him, you know? And like I said, it was pretty much straight away. And then we didn't even share pictures yet or anything. We didn't see each other. We just, it was all over the phone. It was insane. I don't think people do that anymore. <laughs> I don't think it's possible anymore. It's everyone's so, 
everything, everyone wants instant gratification, you know, it's like now, now, now. And even then it's like, everything has to be just so everything has to be so freaking perfect or it's over. They just move on to the next because there's so many people out there. There's so many other people they could go to. So why make it work with this person? You know, why make it work? But back then it was like, um, he made me like a little mixed CD, um, of music like a little digital thing that he put together with all my favorite songs. It, I don't know if you call it a CD. I don't know, but it was so sweet. And I was suffering with anxiety and panic attacks. And so I was really nervous to see him, but he was so sweet. At first he wasn't, he had some issues. And I said, you know what? It's okay. If you're, if you can't wait for me, I totally understand. So he went traveling around Europe really sweet. He brought back so many amazing gifts, little special things, not expensive. The thing about him was he was extremely thoughtful and he listened and remembered things. And so uh, he knew I liked Jade. He bought me this little Jade bracelet. It's probably like there only a few dollars, but to me it was the, it was everything. It was this beautiful Jade bracelet. Um, the Anne Frank House book, the big thick book, he carried that with him everywhere somehow. I mean, it was a bunch of little gifts that just meant everything to me. And so um, when he came back, he was going to drop some plants off on my doorstep. <laughs> and he ended up doing that, but I ended up coming outside and we met for the first time. And it was so amazing and wonderful and perfect. And it was, yeah. It was a great relationship. And so we started seeing each other all the time. He would drive down to see me like every day. Sometimes he would just stay. It took a while though. It took a long time. And I started, I was getting better at that time. Even before he came along, I had started um, getting out a little bit, but my car was not working. It broke down. And so he asked me if he could help me. And I said, what do you mean kind of help? He's like, I'm going to get you a car. He got me a car. He says, what's your favorite car? I said, I don't know. I've always liked Jimmy's, you know, those, <laughs> he, he didn't. Okay. This is, this is what I have to explain. He didn't just buy me a brand new car. He got a used car, let me drive it. And because of that, I started getting better and I started going out during the day and all day and every, you know, I was just thriving with this car. And as soon as I had the money, my dad helped me. As soon as I had the money, I got my own car and I gave it back to him. And he liked the car. So he started driving it himself. He's like, you know what? This car is awesome. It was black with like tinted windows and black, no, it was gray seats. Um, really it's amazing. I love that car. But so I gave it back to him. So it wasn't like he went out and bought me a car. Um, he did. He bought one, but he let me drive it, gave it back to him. Without that, I don't think I would have gotten better. And on top of that, I talked to my friend, my best friend for so many years, every single day. And she was really encouraging, really sweet. Um, but we were having some conflict and it was because she was bringing her friend around. Um, my, at that point we were like boyfriend and girlfriend, my boyfriend who she knew how much I cared about him. And she was mad at me, which I didn't really understand that I was with him, even though that was her cousin. It was like her second cousin. And so I thought, I didn't even think for a minute, like, oh, I shouldn't be with him because she thinks he's cute. I didn't even think about that. I just thought, okay, we connect. She can't be with him. So on purpose, I felt like, this is the way I felt at the time. I felt, okay, she's bringing her single friend that's super hot around him and um, hanging out and going out to like clubs or whatever, <laughs> you know, she, I just felt like it was kind of disrespectful and I was hurt, really deeply hurt by that. But on top of that, I had worked so hard on this, the script, a lot of scripts. I was, I wrote script. I worked, I worked a lot. I wrote a lot, but she kept trying to like say, Oh, um, 
she put her name on it first, which I had suggested, you know, for her cousin initially. And we enter contest and, you know, we would place and we get such good feedback. And I just felt like she was trying to say it was her script and I'm just kind of like the side writer. And I was, I became very possessive, not only of my boyfriend, but of my writing. And I probably was totally bitchy about it. You know, who know? I don't even know how I was acting. All I know is that I was getting better. I felt like a new person. I felt like, oh my God, I feel like I'm waking up for the first time ever. Like even being born doesn't compare to this. <laughs> you know, I, I know that sounds ridiculous, but, um, he was my f real true first love. I, I was in relationships before that and I, 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 loved them. I mean, I was with Matt. I was with Matt for like four years, but we were so young. We were just babies. And so to me, it didn't really hold the same type of feelings and meaning, you know, behind it. This was with my boyfriend. Uh, what can I call him? Let's call it, just go G, just call him G. I don't even know why I'm just going to say what up G, G. Um, it's not even his initial. G uh, was everything I've always wanted in someone. He was funny. He was um, kind. He was extremely thoughtful. He was gentle. He wasn't all about sex. I mean, yeah, sex was important, but it was probably more important to me at that time because I hadn't had it in a very long time. And so it was like all about me fulfilling that, you know what I mean? But for him, I don't think it mattered as much, which is so different. Usually it's the guy, the man that's like, oh, it's just about sex. But he, most importantly out of all of this was that he accepted me for exactly who I was and where I was in life. What kind of, where can you find a man like that? It was impossible. But on top of that, he was financially secure and he didn't flaunt his money he, um, it wasn't like he was buying me expensive gifts and Gucci Prada, blah, blah, blah. No, it was all about like me evolving. How are we going to get you to the next level? What is your passion? You know, what? <sighs> so he got me into UCLA screenwriting program, which is amazing. I mean, what kind of guy does that? It's, like he wasn't buying me Gucci and Prada. He was sending me to school. And then um, he helped me start my business, my yoga chicks business, which was probably the happiest I've ever been in my life. I was so happy back then. And my, my friend, my ex-friend was a huge part of that, why I was happy. You know, I, I adored her. I loved her. She had been in my life since I was a little kid. But I... I felt like she wasn't happy for me that I was getting better. I felt like she wanted to sabotage me and G's relationship. Me and J, what up G? G, yeah. Forgot what letter I used. Um, felt like she should have been, you know, happier for me. You know, I thought she knew, she, she knows how much I've suffered. Why wouldn't she want me to be happy? Why would she want to sabotage it? What kind, why would a friend do that? I didn't understand. <sighs> and then on top of that, I was getting better to the point where I could go hang out with her. She lived maybe three towns away. Yeah, it was three towns away. And so I was, I would go to town and I would contact her and I would say, Hey, what's going on? I'm in town. Let's hang out. And she would say, Oh, I'm sorry. I can't do it. Or she wouldn't return my phone calls or she started seeing some guy that she had met. Um, I think it was on a dating site. I can't remember, but she seemed really happy. So I wanted to hang out and catch up. So she started turning really sour little by little. And, um, we went to the same therapist, which is very funny. And I would know, I go, Oh, you're going on the same day I am, but later or earlier or whatever. So let's just meet up somewhere in between. And it just didn't work out. She would, we, she stopped being my friend. It was like I, I lost my friend because I was dating her cousin, but also 
There were things that supposedly I did that I don't even know I did. She was getting rid of people at that time, which is very strange. Um, I could see it if someone's extremely toxic for your life. You know, someone's really abusive, toxic. Yes, you need to clean house sometimes. But if someone really doesn't know that they said something wrong, she would dump people over the, the littlest thing. She was friends with this one girl um, that she used to practice going out with and this and that. And they've been friends for a long time, since college, I think. And um, I think she had said, oh, she was at her house and they were talking to some other people. And one of the girls had said, oh, let's go do this on this day. And she said, oh, she can't come, you know, but that's all she said. She said, oh, she can't come. And it's because of her anxiety issues. And she was so pissed off that she basically dumped her as a friend. And I said, did you talk to her about this or, you know, what happened? She goes, no, she knows what she did. She would play me the messages that her friend would leave. And they were really sad, you know, actually like, oh, I'm so sorry if I did anything to hurt you. And why don't you call me back? I love you. You're my friend. What did I do? And I said, she probably doesn't know what she did. Maybe you should talk to her. Because some, you know, I, for, to me, friends, if I'm your friend, it is worth trying to communicate with that person so it doesn't happen again. But not only that, so you can maintain the friendship. Friends, friends are very important to me. And so um, if somebody is doing something that's hurtful to me, I'll just tell them. And then we work through it. But if they continue to, to do the same thing and continue to hurt me, then obviously the friendship has to end. But I would tell them first. I would say, you know what? I love you. I adore you. But this friendship has to end. I feel like it's completely one-sided and you've been saying really hurtful things about me or to me. So communication is key. And that's something when, when I was younger, I wasn't that good at, you know, obviously. But now I am. <laughs> And so she always kind of bragged about how she's like the queen of communication and what have you. And yeah, she was great at that, but not when it came to this, not when it came to salvaging her friendships. And so I felt sorry for this girl. And I said, you need to talk to her and tell her what's going on because she sounds heartbroken and you guys have been friends for a very long time. And I don't think she's trying to do this on purpose. She wasn't trying to hurt you on purpose. It wasn't intentional. She's like, whatever, I don't care about her. I'm over it. And I'm like, okay. She did it. Then she did it to me. And I was like, wait, what did I do? So I was talking to the therapist that we have in common. I said, it's weird because, you know, she just blew me off out of nowhere. And I thought we were friends. She's like, oh, you don't know about this or that. And she stopped. And I said, oh my God, were you just going to tell me what I did? I go, what did I do? She told you, obviously, this is why you don't have the same therapist. And she goes, oh, I can't tell you. I can't tell you. I said, you just were going to tell me. Why don't you just tell me? And she's like, I can't, I can't, I can't. I said, okay, whatever. I said, obviously, I don't need a friend like that. That would just, I've seen her pattern. You know, this, she does this, she's done this to quite a few people, you know, in her past. And this is just what she does. I don't know why. I don't know why she does it. And to this day, I still don't know what I really did wrong. I was being a bitchy. I was being really protective over G and my writing because I worked so hard at it. You know, it's like, it was like my baby. It's like, oh my God, I put so much effort. I put so much energy into this. And so for um, someone else to like be breastfeeding my child, you know, it just, it's weird. It's weird, but it's, I thought, I think we could have worked through it. You know, I think that's, you know, whatever. So we haven't talked since. Really sad. I've written to her quite a few times and she just never responds. And I'm, there's a part of me that's like, what a horrible person she is. <laughs> what made me think she was this awesome person? I would never want to associate with somebody that would hurt people on purpose and not tell them what they did, you know, would... And then there's the other side of me that's like, you know what? I was bitchy sometimes, you know, and I would apologize. I would apologize to her. I apologized to her so many times. Okay. 
well, why isn't she apologizing to me? It wasn't just one-sided. She was trying to sabotage my relationship with G. That was really hurtful. She was trying to make it seem like she wrote the screenplay that we were trying to sell. That was really hurtful. There was a lot of things back and forth. And so, <sighs> ex-friends. Okay, so we're talking about ex-friends, ex-boyfriends. And it happens to be that this particular situation, they were cousins. <laughs> so, I'm thinking, I'm thinking it had to do with the cousin, you know, but also, um, the cousin, the screenplay, the fact that I was doing so well, um, medication. Okay. This is a big deal. Met, she, she wouldn't take medication and that's okay. I completely under, understand because I wouldn't do, I wouldn't take it either. I was against medication and everybody was trying to get me to, tr to try it. And so my dad finally got me to try it. And I had a good reason at that point because I had a boyfriend and I really wanted to be able to go out to L.A. and see him and stay with him and go out dancing or to the movies or whatever. And I hated the fact that I was kind of trapped in this. Well, I was in this area, you know, we didn't live that that close. And so um, I did it. I tried the medication. I took a little bit, you know, just little by little. I would take more and more to the point where... Um, it was Lexapro and I woke up one day and I was like, I feel like a different fucking person. Like it was the strangest thing. The chemicals in my brain, just everything opened up. And I, to this day, I still haven't felt that way again. Um, but I drove that, that day that I felt that where I woke up and I was like, wow, this is amazing. I feel, it feels like I'm in heaven, the best high I've ever had, you know, it's, I'm going to make my life the best it could be and with the person that I love. And so I drove to the beach with my dog. I had pictures of me there. I think if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you've seen them at uh, Neptune's net. And then I drove, I called him and I said, guess where I'm at, you know, and he was so proud of me. And then he said, do you think you could drive out here? I said, probably. So I did. I didn't have one panic attack. In fact, because of that medication, I stopped having panic attacks altogether. I would have anxiety, you know, here and there, but I, I would, I just stopped having panic attacks. It was the weirdest fucking thing. So if you haven't tried medication, even if it's just a little bit, you should at least try because it could open your life wide up and you'll feel like a new person if it's the right medication. If it's not, worst case, you feel like yourself still and you, you still have anxiety. But for me, it really did change everything. So after that, it was just, that was it. <laughs> everything changed. I was a different person. I love life so much. And I had my own business, my own yoga chicks business. I had everything going for me that I could possibly want. I was in love. Um, yeah, I, I've never been happier to this day. I don't think I, it's possible to be that happy. And, um, I was, I'm really grateful for that time, even if it didn't last forever. Okay. So we, um, we loved each other. We had a great relationship for a while. And basically, I, we, I lived with him for a while. And um, we lived on the beach and what have you. I got pregnant during a time period that my mother was dying of cancer and his dad was dying as well. And I wanted a relationship with my mother, you know, and... The thing is, she did go into remission. But during that time period that we lived together on the beach, um, neither one of us knew how long we had with our parents. And I didn't want that regret of not having a relationship with her at all. And so um, it was really, really painful for both of us at that time period. And having a baby just didn't really fit into anything. Even though we planned it, we were like, we didn't plan me getting pregnant, but we planned on having it. 
um, I, we were so it was so early on that um, we both decided that I would take a pill to get rid of it. You know, you go to the clinic and instead of having like surgery, you just take a pill. And um, yeah, you know what? There is times that I have, I felt pain. I hurt so much because I regret it. And then there's other times that I'm like, thank God, because this world is so fucked up. And our situation, the emotionally, we were not in a good place. And yeah, you know what? It's never a perfect time. Never. I don't, I don't really know that many people that are like, oh, it was just, everything was perfect. But for us, because both of us have dealt with anxiety issues and panic attacks and what have you, I, it was just such a bad idea. We were both not doing well. And, um, but also I just thought, God, my baby's going to have to deal with our anxiety, you know, our issues that we have. Uh. <laughs> okay. So yeah, it was, it was sad. It was sad. But at the same time, I think we both made the right decision. We, we actually made the decision together. And so my dad, I, I was seeing that my dad wasn't doing well. He was getting really forgetful and he wasn't physically, he just wasn't himself. And I would go visit and he would have bruises all over him. And so my nephew finally, um, he was in juvenile hall for hurting my father. And so I decided to move back home after all of that. I said, I'm just going to move back home for a while. Not home. I can't really say that. My dad had sold the house that we grew up in and, um, the house on the hill, I always say, is the house on the little hill. And he had bought a new place. And, God, that's such a long freaking story. In any event, I moved back. I moved in, I should say. I moved in with my dad. And I still, this is the house that I live in now. And um, I took care of him. When um, my nephew got out of juvie, I took care of him too. And I made sure that... He, never, he didn't go near my dad, and if he did, he was out. And at the same time, I was still seeing G. You know, I would still go drive down to visit. I would He would come here. We would go out for lunch, stay at a hotel, go to the movies. We were still together. And so much had happened. You know, his dad died. My mom ended up dying. Oh. God, our relationship just didn't work out. I'm not sure what did it. We got engaged to, um, we were staying at this place on the beach and it was so, it was seemingly really romantic, seemingly, <laughs> you know, we, he gave me this beautiful Tiffany's ring and it was so big on me. And so I said, Oh, can you resize this? And, um, for some reason he thought that I meant, I said, no, to his proposal because I gave him the ring back. But I didn't know that till years later when he was moving on and having this companion move in. I don't, still to this day, I don't know who it is. And I don't care. It's as long as he's happy. But I do know that um, he has a place now in Florida. He, His mom, both parents ended up dying, just like with mine. And he inherited a fortune, you know, m more money than anyone really needs. But, um, that's not why I'm regretful of the relationship. Obviously I left with nothing. I could have very easily kept the car, kept the ring, you know, had the baby. My mom was like, Oh, you should have, this is when she was still alive. She was like, you should have it because then you'll be taken care of. And I said, I'm not going to have a baby for that reason. There's no re yeah. I said, um, but I could have, I could have like trapped a man, a rich man very easily. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to put not only him through that or me through that, but a child, an innocent child. And so, um, I, I left with nothing and I left behind something. I left behind some ivory and I'm not, a, I'm not into ivory. I'm totally against it, but it was handed down through generation to generation. So there was a lot of sentimental value to it. And it was this little China doll. I have a picture of it. It was on his bedside table. 
and it was there the last time I remember that we hung out. And so when he moved again, I asked him for it back. And he says, I don't know what you're talking about. And during that time period, he was going through a lot because uh, I think his, his mom was dying. It was during that time period. And he was doing a lot of drugs and partying and all, of, all of that stuff. And I was the only one there for him when he was going through that. I was always there for him when he needed me. I would drop everything. I had him on a pedestal. Even when we broke up, we didn't even really officially break up. It was just, well, we haven't seen each other in a while. And I'm taking care of my dad and you're taking care of your mom, which he was. We had very similar lives. He didn't really have good family either as far as his sister and brother were just assholes. Super greedy. To get the fortune that he has now, they had to fight in court for years because his brother and sister thought, well, we have kids and you don't, so we should get most of it. He's like, fuck you, you know, it's, we're all in this together. This is our parents and they wanted us all to have it individually. So, you know, they want us to split it up and whatever. So there was a lot of fighting. His, his brother and sister were not good to him. And I knew what that was like, you know, to have a family like that. And that's another reason why we did not have kids. <laughs> Because we were talking about it. We were sitting there and I'm like, okay, what if something happens to both of us? What if we just get in a car accident and die? Who's going to take care of our kids or our child? Who's going to take care of our child? We don't have a brother and sister, either one of us, that we would want near our child, let alone taking care of them and raising them. Um, both of us have put so much energy into being there for our parents that we don't really have any friends that would be willing to take our child because there are friends are just like we are, you know, they're kind of independent, go with the flow. We just, Oh my God. We just thought, God, our, we don't have any cousins really for our children. We don't have any aunts, uncles, grandparents, because our parents aren't going to survive and they're not going to know them. And we were so just in a dark place thinking about that. We had nothing to offer the child. You know, in any event, I asked for my ivory back and he said he didn't have it. And, um, total bullshit. And I let him keep the dog. He was, Jagger was my dog. And he needed him more, I felt, because he had just lost his father. This is before my mother died. I think they died like six months apart or I can't remember. Yeah. So we had a dog and I let him keep the dog and he, he bought me a new dog. He bought me Lacey and that was the best gift ever. And so he loved Lacey. So if I needed anything having to do with Lacey, he was right there, you know, just, I, I'm here, I'm going to help you. But if it was something for me, something like I'm dying, I need a doctor. <laughs> it was like, sorry, I can't do it. Like he didn't give up fuck anymore. I don't know what happened after his parents died. He changed, but also after getting fucked over by that boy band that had their own reality show that lived at his house. That's funny. I know. Um, look them up. They're called the prom king. They were called the prom kings and they were living at his, they had, he had a big house up in the hills and it was like, I don't know why he let them live there, but one of them had him put a car in his name and then got in a car accident and pretty much totaled it and fled the scene. And so he was responsible for that. And um, on top of that, another one wanted money to start a business and that never worked out, but he lost all this money. And it was like one thing after another, but it had nothing to do with me. It was like he was blaming me for all of his problems. And um, like I didn't take anything from him there was a time one period one time he had the cd collection from that cd club you remember that cd club back in the day where you like pay 55 cents or something like that and you get a bunch of cds well there was a time i need i was really really feeling a lot of pain 
due to my, to do everything that's happened. You know, it's just, I wanted to get stoned. I wanted to smoke some weed and we're better than Venice Beach. And so, um, I didn't have any money. My account was negative and, um, he didn't support me. Like I said, it was weird. It was, I didn't mind it though, but he wasn't really like spoiling me and buying me gifts and, you know, paying all my bills and all of that. You know, I had to still have money of my own and he was kind of stingy with this actually. And it's okay, whatever. But, um, don't blame me for your shit. In other words, you know, I'm not the one that ripped you off. I'm not the one that destroyed your life. If anything, I helped your life. I enhanced it, you know? So one time I, um, took some of his CDs because I knew that there was this place, um, down the street that bought CDs, uh, for a little bit of money, like 20 bucks or something like that. I didn't, I never even heard, I never even saw him listen to these CDs. I never even knew he cared about these CDs. It was so stupid. It wasn't like I was selling off like expensive shit. You know, I would never do that. I would never take somebody's stuff and steal from them. But I wanted to get stoned. So I was like, oh, he's not going to even miss these. These are, these are just some CDs. And I don't even, you know, for some reason, it just didn't even occur to me that he would even see that they're missing. And so... I went down there and I sold his CDs and then I, you know, bought some weed, got stoned, hung out. And later that night, he's like, did you take my CDs? I'm like, wait, what? Ooh, ooh. You know, like, what did you do with the CDs? And I said, what CDs? You know, I was like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Seriously, I had no idea that he would even notice they're gone. I not once did I ever see him play those, CD, those CDs. And on top of that, you know, he just collected them from that place, you know, just like I did. Except mine were all in storage or something like that. Okay, so that was the worst thing I've ever done to him, ever. Like, as far as he was concerned. So, when the ivory, when I asked him for the ivory, he's like, you probably sold it for some, for some drugs. Excuse me? Okay, first off... <laughs> I didn't sell any of your expensive, I didn't sell off your memorabilia and your, um, you know, it wasn't like, like I said, it wasn't like I sold something super expensive and I didn't do hard drugs. I wasn't into hard drugs. I was into smoking weed. That's it. So when you're a weed smoker, the worst that you would do is sell some CDs for like 20 bucks. That's the worst thing that you'll fucking do. You're not going to go and pawn your wedding ring to get some weed it's a completely different addiction. You know, it's not like what he was on. Like he was like doing crack and selling off all of his stuff. And so I'm assuming that he sold the ivory. You know, uh, he tried to say that I did. You sold the ivory. You probably sold it for... Oh, I'm so pissed that he would even suggest that and deny the fact that he even had it. So we were friends up until that point. We were still really close for like, shit, like 20 years. It was, seemed like forever, you know? It was like, I've known you forever. How could you say that? Whoever he's with is controlling him, especially the wallet. Whoever he's with is putting words in his mouth because he didn't say that at first. He said, um, oh yeah, the ivory is like, I remember you saying that. I'm going to have to look through my storage. Everything was fine. And then out of nowhere, he's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, you're trying to scam me. You know, and I thought, okay, someone's in his ear. Just like when I got sick and he couldn't afford the doctor. He, no, he could afford it. What am I talking about? He wouldn't hire a doctor to see me. Um, he said, I, could, I can't do that. I'm in a relationship. He said, okay, so whoever you're with is a cold-hearted motherfucker that wouldn't let you help out your ex that's very sick and possibly dying great catch you you found the right person that's awesome and they found someone that's willing to do that for them to totally blow off a sick person um what a horrible fucking human being you know so this person has their claws in him really really well and uh they control everything about him his personality he seems miserable you would think with money it would make you happy and because of him i was able to see that Money doesn't make you happy. You have to have that from the inside. It has to be 
something that you earn almost. You have to kind of fight for your happiness in this life, in this world. And money is not going to, it's not going to, it's not going to do anything. It can make you secure. It can make you feel secure. Like, okay, at least I don't have to worry. And he said that um, in those texts. He's like, well, I'm not worried about money. That's for sure. But all I was saying was like, can you look for the ivory? It kind of means something to me. How am I scamming you if it's something that's mine? You know what I mean? It's like, I wasn't asking for his ivory. I was asking for my ivory from my family, from my great grandparents. Wasn't his. How is that a scam exactly? So he's not the same person. And so I held him up on this pedestal for so long. And that came crashing down pretty much when he wouldn't, not just the ivory, but when the whole doctor thing came up and I got really sick. And, um... I just thought he's not the same person that I knew. That person's gone and that person's never going to return. And this, this person can't, especially after the ivory thing, I said, this person can never be my friend. Um, this is somebody who I wouldn't want to know. He turned into everything he said he wasn't going to turn into. And he's with someone that obviously is just in it for the money. You know, he, yeah. So that's the story of supposedly the love of my life, my ex. And that's also the story of my ex-friend who kind of weird because they kind of pulled the same stunt where you, you could be so close to somebody, so close that it's like their family, but they could turn so easily and just become so cold. And um, I have to say that's something I can't do. If you've been good to me in my life and you've lifted me when I was down or if I've done the same for you, whatever, I will always be your friend. Unless you totally fuck me over, like really, really badly, I well, obviously, I'll tell you why though. I'll say, look, this is the reason. If I'm breaking up with you, I'm not going to cheat on you. I'm going to tell you you know what, this is not working out. We're obviously breaking up. Um, I like to end my friendships and relationships in a good way, in a positive way. And I have in the past. I don't think I have anyone, even him, he always like thanked me. You know, he's like, thank you for not ending this so horribly. You know, he goes, thank you for this not being a messy thing and ugly and fighting and, and not throwing the past in my face and this and that. You know, he used to thank me for that because I wasn't one of those like nightmare women, you know, but then he kind of made it seem like I was when I asked for my own ivory back, you know, he kind of turned and I know it's whoever he's with. Okay. So this is the deal. I don't know if it's a woman or a man. I'm pretty sure it's a man. And the reason for that is, um, Oh, another thing. He likes domination. He kind of told me that once. And I said, why didn't you tell me that sooner? <laughs> Our sex life, sex life could have been so different. You know, why didn't you? So, um, there was this guy that had been friends with him for a very long time. And I loved him too. You know, I still, you know, I'm think fondly of him, you know. But they've been best friends for a long time and he had moved away for a long time. Not for a lot, well, for years. He had lived in another, he lived in Canada and um, they would still see each other. He would still come to visit. He'd go visit him. But he always, I always thought that he was, you know, gay, which doesn't bother me. Who the fuck cares? And it's because of the way he, he dressed really well. He liked to, um... He liked to dance. He never really had a girlfriend around. I've never heard about him or seen him with a girl. And I had seen that he had moved to the same beach that um, he lived on, my ex, G. And so I thought, that's cool. He moved back to town. That's awesome. And this is another thing. Um, G has his profile locked on lockdown, basically. 
Don't ask me why. I think that's weird. I think if you're happy, if you're a happy person and you're so happy with your life or you're just comfortable in your own skin, you just, you're out there. You just put it out there. And that's kind of where I'm at, where I feel comfortable in my own skin. And I don't care what people think of me. I don't care how many people follow me. I don't care about the trolls. I don't care about the past. I don't care what I look like. I don't give a fuck, you know? And so I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not going to hide. And on social networking, I had to put my Instagram on lockdown because I had a troll reporting my pictures, even when they weren't showing anything. I would just show some cleavage or something and a troll would report it and they would, it would, they flag it. So I was like, okay, I'm obviously going to have to go on lockdown. Okay. But with him, why would he not? So he had told me initially, um, first off he called me and he would just, why didn't you want to marry me? Why did you say no? I said, what do you mean? I just I thought we were going to resize the ring. I said, if, and like I said, if I was a greedy woman, if I was trying to screw him over, I would have t kept that ring and sold that for some drugs because I'm such a hard drug user. I was smoking weed, man. Like what kind of shit are you going to, what kind of trouble are you going to get into smoking weed? A few CDs or whatever. It's no big freaking deal. And as a boyfriend that has money and a fiance, I should say a fiance because we're engaged who has all that money and what have you, he should have just been buying me some damn weed. He should have been supportive and said, you know what? I'm stressed out too. I get it here. Let me get you some weed. You know, like don't be so stingy, man. Like fuck you. It was, it was ridiculous considering how much he had to work with financially, you know? He was just really, really like tight. Okay. So, and that's okay. Like I said, it didn't even bother me. I was like, I'm not here to have somebody spoil me. And that surely wasn't going to happen with him. You know, it wasn't that that's not his style and that's okay. Um, like I said, even at the beginning of our relationship, he would spoil me with necessity. He would spoil me with education, a car, a business, all things that were going to enhance my life. And I will always appreciate that forever, forever. As long as I live, I'm always going to respect him for that. And, and I appreciate that. Um, what I don't appreciate is um, him not appreciating the fact that I didn't make this a messy breakup. I didn't take anything from him. And I didn't go and trap a man and have his baby and take lots of money from him. You know what I mean? It's... It's ridiculous, you know? Um, so, okay. So when he first, he called me one night, he sounded like he was drunk or something, or I don't know what he was on, but he was like, why didn't you say yes? And, um, why, um, did you not love me? Do you not, did you not care? And he was bringing up all of this stuff. Like, why didn't you want to have my baby? And I'm like, I, we talked about this. Remember? <laughs> I don't know where you're getting this from because I did want to have your baby. I said, we didn't have anything to offer it at that moment in time. Even with your money, even with money, there wasn't, there was nothing to offer this child. I said, I would, I would have had it <clears throat> under different circumstances. Oh, absolutely. I told you if I was going to do it, it was going to be with him at that time period in my life. It wasn't the right time and I have no, I can't have regrets. Even though I do, like I've said, I can't do it. I can't sit here. You can't go back. It wasn't meant to be. That's the way I feel. I feel like if something was meant to be, it would have happened. And as far as, uh, marrying him, I would have married him. <sighs> a lot of things happen. That was a timing is everything. Not only did the timing fuck up us getting married, but it, it definitely fucked up us having kids and it was just a bad time. And yes, for normal people, people that don't suffer with anxiety disorder and panic attacks and depression or whatever. Yeah. Okay. They would still do it without family, without having any aunts, uncles, cousins, blah, 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 you know, grandparents, they still would have done it without money, without anything. They still would have done it. And I have so much respect and admiration for that, 
those type of people because they don't fear anything. They don't think about it. They're just like, I'm just going to freaking do it. That would be awesome. But both of us, me, him and me both think way too much. You know, that's the problem. So uh, he says, oh, well, I have, it's, he said it was a woman, but yet um, we were still friends on Facebook then. There was no pictures of her, no pictures of her face. There was a picture of her on the beach, but you couldn't see her face and you really couldn't see her body really either. It was a really weird picture. Then there's a picture of somebody with a hat on, a woman, man, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it was a woman. And he says, I don't know. He's, I'm kind of afraid. Um, you know, what if she tries to trap me, you know, all this stuff. And, you know, I said, you know, just go with the flow. I said, you know, see what happens. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. So I was actually really, you know, positive and really encouraging for him to be with somebody else. And they were going to move into, you know, she was going to move into his house. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, go for it. And no, I, I definitely loved you. And so we would have these great talks. We were still really good friends. And when I'm feeling down and scared about everything financially, you know, emotionally, whatever, I'm always like, why didn't I say, no, don't let her move in. I'm moving back in. Let's get back together. Why didn't I do that? Why didn't I just have that freaking kid? Why didn't I? I would have loved that kid to death. That kid would have been my, my everything. I would have lived for that child. Or why did I, you know, why didn't I show up at my friend's house and have a talk with her about what's going on with our friendship? Why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? You can't spend your days doing that. You know, you, sometimes it's just, that was what's, been, what's meant to be. And so he was moving in with this girl. He didn't really say much about her was, is that she, the only thing he really did say was that she doesn't like to travel. She has to be near her, her, her family, which is on, was near that beach and that, um, she loves animals and she works at the vet as an assistant. And he told me a few things about her and I said, okay, well, she has a big family from Mexico. It's like, that's awesome. That means you're going to have like a family, you know, how could I try to talk him out of it? You know, I wanted him to be happy. He didn't really have a family. I said, okay, well, I'm here for you. I'm always going to be here for you, but okay so he basically unfriended me <laughs> I don't know what's going on with him he put everything on lockdown I don't know who she is I don't think that she exists I think it's that guy the friend that I told you that I talked about there's one picture of him there was one picture of him and it was just him taking a vacay with the other and they went to some beautiful lake and they were taking pictures and he looked at peace, you know, I think all along he's always been attracted to men. His, um, his cousin had one at one point wanted to have sex with him and he would get all giggly about it. You know, it was kind of cute. Actually, it was like, you're, you're like giddy right now about this. I said, but he's your cousin. What is it with the cousins? I don't know. But he was his cousin and, you know, he was a hot cousin. He was like the good looking cousin and all this stuff. But he, he had fantasies about sucking his cousin's dick. I know. I, what's up with the cousins in that family? I don't know. But they're all attracted to each other. It's a trip. But, you know, the truth is I don't even, my cousins are all way older than me. I was the oopsie baby. So all my, 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 my mom was too. My mom was the oopsie baby. So her sister, her two sisters and her brother were way older than she is. And so I didn't grow up with my cousins. I grew up with one of them kind of, and I have that picture of us in Philadelphia, but, um, he was older than me too, though. He's like my brother's age. So, um, okay. So also there was this very attractive guy that lived a few houses down and sometimes he would be out in front in his little yard with a shirt off and we'd be walking by taking the dog for a walk and we both would go you know like hi how you doing <laughs> so there was that but also the fact that he dressed well he took way better care of himself than i ever could 
he would do his cuticles at night in bed. He would just sit in bed and he would put cuticle um, oil. I think it was oil or Vaseline. I don't know. But he would do his cuticles in bed every night. And I was like, I don't give a fuck. I'm just, um, I don't know. Like he, to me, okay, one time. Okay, one time I went to his house when he moved up into the hill. This beautiful house. It was gorgeous. It was like round or something. It was it was fabulous. I mean, the view alone was like, wow, this is amazing. And one night I went over there and the prom kim kings were getting ready to go perform at a club, <laughs> the boy band. And um, <laughs> I just was up there because he, you know, one of the boy band guys was like, oh, I have some really good weed. You know, if you want some weed, you should hang out or whatever. So I went up there just to get stoned, just to smoke out. And the view, like I said, there was this amazing view, but I wanted to see my dog too. I wanted to see Jagger. And so I was like, oh, I get to hang out with Jagger and Lacey gets to hang out with Jagger and we get it. So I just wanted to hang out for a few and they were all going to go out because they were going to perform. And his friend, his friend, I don't, like I said, I have a really strong feeling. I'm very psychic. At times I have a strong feeling that they're together and I'm really, if they are, I'm really happy for him. But when I went over there, he was there, the friend. And he was, he was fixing G's, um, necktie. What is it called? I can't believe it. Uh, just because people don't really wear them anymore. Um, anyways, he was fixing it and he was like brushing off like <laughs> lint on his, um, jacket. They look like a couple, you know, they really did. They were so cute together actually. And, um, I just thought, what is going on with them? So that was like the first, not the first, that was, that was one of the times that I kind of thought something's definitely up with them. And I started thinking about after the whole incident with me being so sick that I almost died and then the ivory and him reacting the way he did when at first he was super cool about it, but obviously somebody was right there. Um, who would be able to control his money? Who would be able to control him and his money? It wouldn't be a woman. I never went near his money. I never went near his bank. I never even thought about it. Not even a thought. Never went to his paperwork. I never spied. None of that shit. It would have to be a man. And he would be the bottom. Who would be the top? There you go. And they bought a place in Florida. Yeah, it's fabulous too. It's like a little beach place. It's like a two story beach house. Really nice. Um, so I think that maybe he had a, a friendship with this woman because of, you know, he has dog, even after Jagger died, he had, you know, dogs and, Maybe they did have like some sort of, um, relationship, a friendship more so because, um, I just can't picture it being anything more than that. And I think that once his mother died, I think he realized that he has to be true to himself. And so I think he finally decided to be with this guy who he had known and they've been close forever and, uh, they moved to Florida together. First, they moved to Palm Springs. I knew that it couldn't be her only because she would never move away from her family. That's what he told me. He was very specific about how she is. And she doesn't like to travel. She doesn't like planes. And she definitely doesn't like living away from her family. She still lived with them when they got together. So um, I thought Palm Springs is, is fabulous. It's for the gays. They love it. It's perfect. I hope he is doing this, what I'm imagining, you know, that he's with this guy that, but whatever's happening, this person has a lot of control over him. And I just don't think she would have, if you know what I mean. I don't, he's not that type that would allow a woman to control his life. I didn't even try because that's not who I am. I'm not a controlling person. I'm not possessive, controlling, manipulative, conniving. I'm none of those things. But I definitely will ask someone for what I need. Um, 
So, as I said, I don't think money makes you happy. I think it's being true to yourself. So if there's happiness within him, I definitely think it's because he's finally being the person he was always meant to be. And maybe he didn't feel comfortable doing that while his parents were still alive. I don't know. Okay, so I have to go. I mean, you probably stopped watching a long time ago if anyone watched it all. Oh, God, that felt good to talk about. Once again, this is my therapy. If anyone wanted to really try to embarrass me, they'd probably take little clips of all my videos, the worst, my worst moments, you know, of me biting off my headband, you know, or whatever. And they would put them all <laughs> into a video and, um, I would just laugh. I would just think it's the funniest thing ever. I don't think I could be hurt at this point by my honesty, by being raw. I don't think I could. I think somebody could try it, but, um, God, life is too short for that shit. It's too short for drama and bullshit. I just don't have time for it. And so there you go. My best friend, my ex-friend, my ex-boyfriend, that's it. I think he's gay. I hope he is. I hope he's happy. I hope he's in content and, um, living a good life in Florida, which Florida just is the worst, but I can see how he would be drawn to that. So there you go. Sometimes it's not meant to be with people. You just have to let it go and move on. All right. Peace out.